Canavan. Senator David Pocock. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. I'd like to start by thanking Senator Canavan. I really appreciate how much he stands up for communities who have relied on fossil fuels for generations in terms of workforce. It's going to be a really important part of this in the transition to actually look after those communities. And it's actually a huge opportunity for regional areas if we get this right. And that starts with actually having some certainty after a, a decade of uncertainty, uncertainty of, of inaction, of delay, to actually have the big, the big picture settings that say we're heading in this direction will allow that transition to happen, will allow us to actually look after regional areas. I'd like to touch on a, a few of the things that Senator Canavan mentioned, um, most of it with which I disagree with, uh, but that's the beauty of this, this place. He rightly talked about cost of living. We're in a cost of living crisis around the country. The economics of climate action have changed so fast. I understand that that's some people in this place are still maybe going off old figures. This continues to change, and we're now in a, in a position where electrification offers households savings of thousands of dollars a year if, if, if we get this right. We've seen it done with rooftop solar, started by the, the Howard government. We now have some of the cheapest rooftop solar, solar in the world. Many people across the country are benefiting from this. We can do the same thing for, for batteries, for heat pumps, for electric vehicles, and unlock real savings, not just a, a one-off you know, discount or fuel excise cut, but thousands of dollars every year going forward for, for everyday Australians. Another comparison which, which I disagree with was comparing us to, to Europe. Europe buy a lot of gas from Russia. We don't buy any gas from Russia, yet we're subjected to international prices for gas because members of, of both major parties have allowed gas companies to charge us export prices for our own gas. That's a, that's a real failure of legislation, and I think it really speaks to just how much influence the gas companies have at a time where they're making up to 500% more profit. Just the, the thought of actually recouping some of that to invest into our regions doesn't seem to be, to be on the table. The last thing I'd like to... Um, respond to was Senator Canavan's concerns about the judicial system and litigation. This is already happening. Tiwi Islanders are currently in court against Santos about a gas project to try and access some of Australia's dirtiest gas from their, their, their homelands. The Gomorrah people in the Narrabri are also taking Santos to court about their proposed Pilliga project. And it, in the, the former government was taken to court by young people in Australia saying that the government has a duty of care to actually protect young people in their futures. And this is really what climate action is about and what this bill is a start to get us right on, the, on the right track. It's clear human influence on the climate system is now an established fact. Our greenhouse gas emissions are warming the planet. And the results are disastrous. Just turn on the news. More intense floods, fires, cyclones, heat waves, warming and rising oceans. Climate change is the greatest challenge we face. It will affect all the people and places we know and love. Our communities around the country are demanding action. Action from each other, action from corporate Australia, and action from government. Jurisdictions from the UK to New Zealand have adopted climate laws that give a framework for climate action. Some Australian states and territories have done the same. The ACT, who I proudly represent, passed a climate act in 2010. Victoria passed a similar act with broader functions and powers in 2017. As with so many aspects of climate change policy, after a decade of inaction, the Commonwealth lags woefully behind. There are more than 80 pieces of legislation relating to energy and various elements of climate policy 
The sum of these parts is not an effective framework. A more complete and, amb and ambitious climate law would provide this framework. It would in include guiding principles, adaptation, action plans, and an emissions budgeting framework. This bill has none of those. What it does have and do is perform two key functions. First, it sets two targets, 43% by 2030 and net zero by 2050. And secondly, it provides an accountability framework for climate policy. The science on the target is clear. 43% by 2030 is not enough. Scientists like former chief scientist Professor Penny Sackett and eminent climate professor David Caroli are unequivocal. According to Professor Caroli, the emissions reduction target is too weak to represent Australia's fair share of global emissions reductions needed to meet the Paris Agreement target of lim limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees. I'd like to thank the many eminent Canberrans who have been pushing for action. Professor Frank Yotso, Professor Mark Howden, Professor Will Steffen, Professor Nerly Abram, Professor Colin Butler, Dr Anna Greta Hunter, and many others. We clearly have a moral obligation to act on climate change. As a wealthy country, doing the bare minimum does not cut it. We can and should be going harder and leading the world. We stand to lose so much from inaction, from the incredible Great Barrier Reef to many of our beaches, heat-sensitive species like the greater glider, and an uninterrupted summer of cricket, to just name a few. Yet we, gain to, we stand to gain so much from bold climate action. We can build a better future, a livable future, and an economy for the future. We can protect and conserve so much of what makes this nation great. Unfortunately, the, the new Labor government has been explicit that 43% is as high as they're willing to go. While I'd like to see more ambition, climate scientists would like to see more ambition, I think millions of Australians would like to see more ambition. 43% is certainly an improvement on where we were 12 months ago. And legislating a target is a significant step forward. This target will provide certainty to encourage the large-scale investment that will be needed in the transitional, transition to renewable energy. This is a development the community supports. After more, more than a decade of climate wars, we need to bank some gains and move from the what to the how. Perfect should not be the enemy of the good, and so if the government is unwilling to be more ambitious, I support the legislated targets. Outside of the targets, I call on the government to support my amendments to improve the accountability and transparency mechanisms within this bill. The bill has three primary accountability and transparency mechanisms. First, the annual statement on climate change from the minister. Second, publicly available advice from the Climate Change Authority on that statement. And third, publicly available advice from the Climate Change Authority on updated emissions reduction targets. Each of those mechanisms should be strengthened, and I'll move amendments to do just that. Accountability and transparency on climate action is so important, particularly in the context of Australian climate policy. We don't have a carbon price. We don't have a cap-and-trade system. We have a set of overlapping and complex policies that provide a mesh of incentives and penalties. All this complexity makes inaction and damage easy to hide or to dress up as action, as we've seen in the past. Without accountability and transparency, it'll be hard to identify and measure the impact and effectiveness of policies. Without transparency, we are putting our climate and our future behind an opaque window. Beside that window, while we debate this 43% uh, in both the lower house and the Senate, 
Another government minister is spruiking the opening of 46,000 square kilometres of new offshore oil and gas exploration. Fossil fuel subsidies remain the same time that we're seeing fossil fuel, sub fossil fuel companies making extraordinary profits. And at the same time, we're hearing that the cost of actually helping everyday Australians is, is too much for the government to consider. We've seen climate wrecking projects like Beedaloo, Scarborough, stay in the pipeline. Thousands of carbon credits with questionable integrity continue to be issued. And this attitude of just trust us, we'll, we'll get there, is, is not good enough. And Australians are demanding better. I believe we should know what impact federal budget measures will have on our emissions reduction targets. We should know how much of the targets are to be achieved by different sectors of the economy. We should know how developments in climate science are influencing climate policies and targets. If science is not being followed, we should be told why not. Science is referred to just once in this bill. By contrast, it appears seven times in the UK equivalent. We should know whether Australia's emissions reduction targets represent our fair share of the reductions needed. And if they don't, why don't they? We don't have to look far to see our Pacific Island neighbours crying out for climate action. For many of them, this is an existential threat. They risk losing their homes and they're crying out for both more action but also leadership from their, their neighbours. Australia has a, a moral obligation to act on climate change. We are, <laughs> relatively speaking, an extraordinarily wealthy country and with that comes a responsibility to, to lead. Not just do the bare minimum as we're seeing in this bill, but to actually step it up. So while this is an important symbolic sort of getting back to the, the table, let's not pat ourselves on the back too much about this, this bill. It's a first step. There's so much more to be done. And with climate policy, everything has to be looked at through the lens of integrity. Because a target without integrity is just a number. It's not going to matter. And future generations will judge us harshly for our inaction, for some of the ridiculous arguments that we've, we've used to avoid acting on what is the biggest challenge humans have ever faced. We have to act. We have to act decisively. I support, I support this, this bill and I look forward to working with my colleagues here in the Senate to ensure that this is just the first step of not only ending the climate wars but of winning them of going from an embarrassing laggard when it comes to climate action who turns up to international summits to talk about climate action and spruiks gas companies, who tries to water down agreements where you have countries who have hardly contributed at all to climate change and are paying a massive price. You, you turn on the television and watch what's happening in, in, in Pakistan, you see some, some of the, the famines happening in Africa, we know the awful consequences to not only human life but to ecosystems around the world with unchecked climate change. We're starting to get a glimpse. What happens next is up to us. We can act decisively. We can be part of actually building a better future together. We can lead in the, in the global community. We've heard concerns raised by Senator Canavan about what countries like China are doing. We should be out there demanding more action from the international community. It's clear that developed countries need to lead this. It's a huge opportunity for us here in Australia, not only in terms of our economy, building economy for the future, unlocking energy savings for, for households, having a, a cleaner environment in our, in our cities, but also then being part of exporting that intellectual property, exporting those ideas around the world as everyone has, has this transition. It's happening. It's going to happen whether we like it or not. The speed at which it happens is up to us. What an incredible opportunity to be part of. We stand here as 
You're one of the first generations to know the scope of this issue, this problem, and one of the last to actually be able to act. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.